You know, even as I was recording or even just thinking about making this video series, I knew you hookers were going to send me some Alexander McQueen stuff. I just knew it. I just knew it. Hey, hey, party people. In this episode of How Do You Make That? We are going to analyze some McQueen garments submitted by subscribers, of course, and uh, talk about how do you make that? And in this series, I'm not going to be doing full blown patterns or drapes of any of these, but I am going to tell you how to make it. Let's start with this one. Let's talk about the fabric. There are a lot of things where things are sticking up, sticking up, sticking up. And therefore, that means it has to be something with a lot of body, something that's really crisp, like a taffeta. Okay. I am voting like a very thick, substantial taffeta because it's not glossy like satin is. It's like it's got some shine, but it's not super glossy like satin is. And Duchess satin is really voluminous and very stiff. So I don't think it's that either. Um, but something that reads like taffeta, but is much thicker and much more substantial than like your prom dress taffeta. Okay. We have a basic sheath dress with a V and then there's like a, a waistband, a very narrow waistband up here. And it's got some princess seams, kind of like the base body is fairly uh, easy to figure out. The skirt here, we have this band and we have a mermaid. Okay. The, what's the difference between a mermaid and a trumpet? A trumpet is one where it hugs the hips and just under the hips, it starts flaring out. Mermaid is where it tapers and then it flares at the knees. Okay. And so, you know, you're making a mermaid, but of course you have, it looks like it's rounded in the front. And then when you make this, and this has, I saw, like I was watching the video of it and there's an aerial shot where you can see that it has quite the substantial train, but you see there's lots of gathers here, okay? And the only, and it's bubbled. You see that? The hem is bubbled and tucked in, in the front. Now, I don't really know what's happening in the train in the back. It's the aerial shot is like the video screen is this big and the figure is this big. So you can't really tell what's going on in the train, but this is all very gathered and voluminous. And the only way you can tell exactly like, you know, it's a two X the material, three X the material. You have to actually test it out on individual fabric. Okay. Every single time you want to gather a fabric, you want to test a strip of it to see if it's gonna give you the volume or the look that you're going for, okay? We go over this a lot in my pattern making Patreon. And then there's another piece. See, there's like a piece that's straight. You see that? Where it's, oh, it's not a piece underneath. It's an extra piece that's stitched on. This is part of the skirt and this is an extra ruffle that has been added to the top. Okay. And this is sticking up like this. And again, because it sticks up, not perfectly, look how it's flopping to the side a little bit. It is coming up because she's walking towards us in this picture. And so the wind and the walk is kind of kicking it up more. So it does flop on the sides and that's the ruffle. Okay. This one is not like doubled over. It doesn't bubble like this does. So I would guess it is a single ply. Okay. And then waist. This is the more interesting. We have the waist. We have the V. It comes to we have this little skinny waistband. We have a V that comes to a perfect point there. Okay. No overlap and no gaping. And we have a ruffle that starts at the neckline. So here's her neck. And here's a ruffle. And then there's another ruffle, but the ruffle underneath is gathered more. You see how this is smooth 
and it just kind of caps like a mushroom cap. But this one is more gathered and has more ripple in here. So this ruffle is actually, when you look at the pattern, it's going to be much bigger. Okay. And it's a gathered ruffle versus a flounce. A flounce is when, you know, you basically have a circle skirt pattern and you open it up. So when you see a flounce, you know, you'll see all the gathers at the bottom and it might actually, you know, the drapes might actually go to the top, but it's not gathered. Whereas these, you can literally see the gathers coming from the seam. Okay. So this is a ruffle and this is a flounce. This is neither. It's just the cap. Okay. And then this is a ruffle and underneath is sleeveless. So that's our base gown. And then we have this massive heart shaped something. I think the, the, the inspiration behind the show was partially about blooming. And so it's about flowers blooming. Look up the video and you can see, right? This big cap on top. And it's hard. I could not find any clear side views. They were all like dark and in passing. So it didn't really give me a lot of information. Um, but more of a ruffle, you know. I took this into Photoshop and I, uh, I like created a higher contrast. That's why the coloring is kind of weird. But to really see the details. And then you see this background piece and it's separated. Okay, it's not a... And you get this thing and it kind of goes past the waist and you get this like heart shaped look going on. And it looks like, you know, angel wings that are created from, you know, it looks like there's a center point to the ruffles going like this. This is the one shot of the back that I could find. And so while there is this view from the front, the back is, again, you have to have something really stiff like the taffeta that I mentioned before to get it to stick straight out her back. So that if you see a side view, you know, when I saw the side view of her, it, it sticks out. Not a ton, I'm gonna say three, four inches, okay? It's not like out like this. It's hard to gauge on someone as slender as this model, but it's a little bit like this. This taffeta is doubled over, okay? You, do you see the fold along the edges of all these ruffles? Which makes me think that there's something in there to make it even stiffer, to stick out even better. Here are some options. You could have horse hair in there, okay? But horse hair is kind of heavy, I'll give you that. Um, you could have Hymo horse hair cloth um, in there that a lot of tailors use for to add body and stiffness and structure to the front of sports coats, suit jackets, but can also be used in women's wear, in corseting, bustier styles to give it more stiffness, more body. You could use... Um, like a silk gazar, an organza, a silk that is very stiff, that'll stick straight out, okay? Maybe, <gasps> gasp, a polyester was used because polyester versions of all these things are stiffer, okay? Which normally we don't want, like when we're draping something slinky in silk, you don't want the stiffness of polyester, but if you want something to build structure, you could slide a slice of something stiff like that in between the, the folded over taffeta to create these vertical ruffles. You see there is like a back strap to kind of hold it. It's The back also has a V. Of course, we don't see any information, but it's, it's held together because my guess is this is heavy enough and in the front is like a deep V with no lacing or anything so that 
if that little strap wasn't there, the whole thing would just come off her shoulders like all the time. Like it just wouldn't stay. Okay. But it's nice and subtle. It's like really high on the neck. So it's not like a crisscross across the back to make it really obvious. And then we have this heart shape blooming flower type situation with a million vertical ruffles. Okay, next up is this Alexander McQueen denim jacket. And the person who sent this in said, I'm mostly interested in how to make this cocoon sleeve. So let's get into it. Most jackets, okay, have a two-piece sleeve. And so here's a, a sleeve. I have a video of this somewhere of how to draft a sleeve. And so what you want to do is take your one-piece sleeve and first turn it into a two-piece sleeve. So sew line to sew line. So I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch from the fold line and then inch and a quarter up here and three, three quarters of an inch down here. That's on the front. Okay. Single notch, double notch always means it's the back. Okay. So we're doing... And this is going to be my under sleeve, okay? So you see how that's the back, okay? It's a two piece sleeve already. And you know, of course, later on, you wanna like fuss around with the seam placement. That's on you, you do you, boo boo. Under sleeve. Put that aside. And here's your top sleeve. And we gotta put in these tucks. Now, please keep in mind, I'm keeping these things super casual. You're gonna, you know, anyone who's actually doing the pattern is gonna measure all beautifully and, right? Okay, so <laughs> let's say we are pleating this up to whatever size pleat you want. I'm just gonna do three and call it a day. You guys know basically what I'm doing, right? So to me, it looks like it starts at the elbow, okay? Just looking at the measurements, it looks like it starts at the elbow or it's like right in the middle of where the elbow is. So I'm gonna slash at the elbow line and put my pleats in there. And always have the grain line there in advance so that when you separate things, you can kind of line things back up again. And then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna line it up. And we're gonna line up that grain line so we still have, have like the main structure of the sleeve, right? So we're here, right? So you see how there are tucks in the front, and there are tucks in the back, Okay, the underside, the undersleeve is smooth, so we can leave however we cut it out. And the top has a center line, okay? So we're gonna separate in here, okay? And what's gonna happen, let's say this gets sewn and this gets sewn, and then we're gonna cut it in here, but this part is going to not be sewn this is gonna get opened up. And when you open it up, you're gonna get this kind of bubble action, okay? My guess is my pleats are, I folded my pleats a little too deep. It looks like they folded, they just pinched it out a little bit. 
That's my bad, but I think you get what I'm doing is you just pinch out this front seam, this back seam, the same amount, okay? Because they look pretty identical in terms of how much they pinched out. And then when you cut the middle line of the sleeve, you know, there's no, so it's going to bubble out. And it's going to create that shape, you know. All right. The last dress we're going to be looking, the last Alexander McQueen garment we're going to be looking at today is this one. Okay. Let's go head to toe on this. All right. We have... Okay, there's no way I'm going to be able to just look at it and say, this is the shape of this fabric, okay? Because <laughs> who's to know? Who's to know? Here's what I can say. At the neckline, it is gathered, okay? My guess, this is a wild, educated, but wild guess, because I see the circle here around the neck, I mean, she got to get it on somehow, right? And it's all gathered, you know, it's here. It's gathered like crazy pans, okay? And it's chiffon, so it doesn't take up a lot of bulk. And it's this wild piece. And all the lace designs and everything are along the edge. And it's on her neck, and then it's artfully. Because, li oop. because listen... Each time you see it in a different, when you see it in different exhibits, it's done a little bit differently, but you see how there's like all these gathers here, you know, you have to get them somewhere, right? And then the lace is kind of like along the edges as if they were, you know, decorating the edges. See that? So that's what I think is going on there, okay? Now, this top, the silhouette of this gown is actually fairly simple and straightforward. It's just that, number one, the fit is beautiful. Number two, the materials are just ridiculous, sumptuous. The construction is on point chef's kiss. And so it makes it really beautiful. And I'm not trying to be dismissive of it at all. I'm just saying that the silhouette is straightforward okay it's a fitted bodice with a gathered neckline i'm gonna show you how to do that in a second the sleeves are very fitted set in sleeves you can see the armholes right there it's got a beautiful understructure i'm sure it's like the most amazing bustier fitted to the body, corselet, whatever you want to call it, understructure you've ever seen in your life. Okay. Um, let me know if you want a video on corsets and specifically what about corsets you want to learn. Okay. And then the skirt is just many, many, many layers of ruffles. And we just went over tiered skirts in my pattern making class on Patreon. So my pattern making students can tell you basically, okay, so here's the skirt shape. And what you end up doing, like, let's analyze the basic shape. The basic shape is an A-line, okay? Just, right, with a train. And so what you would do is create an A-line skirt with a train, okay? And so we have, and this is what you would call a trumpet shape, fitted around the hips and then flared out. Okay, see the difference between that and the purple dress? So it's more like that, you know, the pattern looks kind of like that. And it does kind of pick up in the front a little bit, you see that? And then you have this train in the back, okay? So you dra draft this, and then however many layers of ruffles you want to have, whether it's two or 17, like this one, you cut up your pattern, you know, and at this point, this is where 
you draw all these lines and you hold the big piece of paper up to you in front of a mirror, in front of a model, and see how you like the vertical proportions of them all divvied up. Now, we're doing the ruffles and look, these are flounces, okay? You don't see any gathers at the top. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, they look like, see, in this one, she looks like she's fluffing them up with her hands as she's like maybe going up a stair. You know, you see how she's picking it up there. And, you know, here, this one's a little bit grainy, but I just don't see the gathers. Here, you see how flat that is? right there. And this is kind of gathering just because there's so many things going on, but it's smooth. If it was gathered, you would see a little bit of the, the body of the fabric in the gathers. So this makes me think that this is more of a flounce. Now, I wouldn't say like a full circle flounce. I'm thinking more like a semicircle, you know, flounce. Okay. Not a ton of rippling. There are all kinds of tiered and ruffled skirts out there. There are a lot where people want to see the separation. So the ruffle is shorter than the seam. But this one, you don't see any seams. Okay. You are seeing. So these ruffle, these flounces are longer than the section so that the seam is completely covered. And then... You know, the next one, it starts here, but it comes underneath and overlaps over the seam like that. And so you never see the seam that it's connected to. Okay. You don't see the above seams unless you, like she's walking, so you pick it up and you see how there's that seam there and you see a little bit underneath or you would if it was this was a little bit more high res but that's that okay and then of course the big train this one okay the thing about this is i love this because it's both practical and beautiful it's like everything kind of works well together because when you have fabric this beautiful, do you want to cut into it a whole lot? Absolutely not. Are you going to interrupt this beautiful design? No. But do you need darts in or, or some kind of shaping seam to get this beautiful shape? Absolutely. But they got rid of all of them and they added them to the gather. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You remember Mariah and the this is her block, okay, that she made with the bodice if you watch that series. And in that, she had draped this and we did a waist start and we did a bust start, okay? But there are a lot of darts. I mean, of course you should be working on a full round because there's no center front seam here, but we're just doing that for you. I also did a dart manipulations video, me, not Mariah, um, where I showed you, these are the basic dart positions. I'm not saying you can't put darts anywhere else, but these are kind of like the basics. And you can make a neck dart, okay? Go watch that dart manipulations video. I'll link it below if you wanna learn about how to do dart manipulations and princess scenes. But we're gonna put in a neck dart. And it's gonna, do you see how they all radiate from the apex, okay? So I, I marked all these lines. This is the apex, and we're going to put in a neck dart. And, you know, we always want to be a, at least an inch, half an inch away from the apex. So what happens is, first of all, we're going to close this dart, and we're going to open this up. And when you close this dart, and if you've trued this all nice, like the hem will still be perfectly flat and smooth and perfect. When you close this up, you 
I know I'm being messy today. You see how the neck opens up, all right? And you get a neck dart. And we're gonna close this bust dart. And again, this should true beautifully and stick to your original side seam. And now we have this massive neck dart where we can use this. This is like, if you look at it, it's about a 2x gather. You're, you have like two times the neckline here so that you can put in your gathers. You could draw a new neckline and it'll gather up into this circle. You have all this extra fabric now. This is all closed up so you can just have a beautiful dartless bodice and then all your fabric has been moved up here and you're gonna just gather this up along the waistline. True that curve to wherever you want the neckline to be. The end. Okay, and that's how you're gonna do that. That was so fun. That was so fun for me. Um, yeah, so let me know if this was helpful to you. So I have a ton of submissions for how to make, how do you make that video that I'm still going through? Let me know if you want to see those. And if you really want to submit something for a future video, send it to teaching at zoehong.com. The subject line must be, how do you make that video? And send me high res, multiple views, close ups, all that good stuff. But do not send me like 20 megs of stuff, okay? Like just because something is high res doesn't mean it has to be like a gigabyte of photos. All right. And uh, share, subscribe, like all the ways you show me love. And I will see you in the next video.